DGC. All right, welcome to the Dude Grow Show. The dude has taken the day off today, and I've got a couple guests, man. First off, Banner, what's up, brother? Hey, hey. Yes, thank you for holding down the fort. And uh, man, Jaron, New Millennium Nutrients, thank you so much. For Always good me. to be here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always thank good. you. First off, man, I don't know if y'all know, but Jaron and New Millennium 5-8 Distribution are big supporters of the Dude Grow Show, man. So thank you for that. I You're very welcome. You yeah. in us, man. Yeah, no doubt. Long time supporters. From you know, way we've been doing this for a long day. time. So it's always been a pleasure, my friend. And you are a supporter in the way where you're a great grower. I, I can say that. I don't know if you can say that, but I can call you one. I, fair enough. And so I call <laughs> you and I want to know why. I do certain things. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about trimming and shaping plants for maximum yield. And that got me to think, yes, we want to shape plants for maximum yield, but I want to shape plants for maximum quality mm -hmm. too. And I don't know if there's a, a give or take there. I called you well, I called you up and I said, hey man, what do I do to shape these plants to get them? Uh, I, I tell you what, in veg. How do you shape your plants in veg? So, uh, great question. And I do believe that two things, I mean, I think for vigor and for quality and even for overall quantity, you know, proper pruning practices at the right times. So and there can be, you know, trimming, pruning, these are kind of, you know, words that sometimes I think are used in different ways. Yeah, shaping isn't a very... Uh, I, I, that would be what I would call pruning, sure, right? Sure. And so what I would call... Well, it really, mechanical. Exactly. And what I like to do very early on in veg is start that. So I'll, I'll get my first, you know, the clone, let it start really... Uh, broken. Here. Yeah, see, this yeah, yeah, you broken. might want that. Um, I'll let it get up and, and, and do, you know, nice and tall out of solo cup. I'll do an original hard um, prune to then get that, what I like to call that kind of candelabra, candelabra. right? The candelabra. So get you know, four, I'll, I'll six. put one in later. I've got it. I just did that two, three days ago. I've got something to show you there, brother. And and what I do with that at that really nice top clone, that's a clone for me. Okay. So that's literally, I'm already taking the next generation, but I'm starting very early on to get that up. And even every, like, let's say two weeks, if I'm doing, especially if I'm going to do a spray or something like that, a preventative spray, I like to go through, retop things if need be, clean up the bottoms a little bit, and then take off a few fan leaves just so I can get really, really good coverage. Um, Scott, what's going on with your shop, man? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the jungle. Oh yeah, uh -oh. I'm in the jungle, baby. <laughs> Jerry, you're talking about uh, uh, trimming, man. Yeah. Give me a favor. Yeah, yeah. Show, show me right on Absolutely. camera. Absolutely. I just did this a couple days ago. Here are some guava gators, and if you want, I'll start it off by. Ooh, hang on, let me get this one out. So on something like this, and we can do we can do both of them yeah. real quick. I'm going to take it at yep. the very least here. Do it. And I might even go as aggressive as here because if you can see, if I go here, I got one, two, three, four main branches. Now, this little Show one down people. here, hit, off the board, the all right, we're just going to hit it. Yep. And you got a nice big, oh, I take this clone, yeah. I'll go ahead and set that in a solo cup, right. let it soak up some water, get nice and turgid, and I'll take that and just like you have it here, directly stick into cocoa for my next round. You can peel a couple of nodes, get some good exposure of the cambium layer. Okay, make That's a clone a really out nice. of it, man. Make a clone out of it. Show everybody what's up, man. All right, all right. Come so on, come on. What I would do normally, what Please. I would normally do is put that underwater so I don't get any kind of embolism on there. Right. I'd clip that under there. I would take this, I would peel it. That'd be a clone for me. I'd be peeling it That'd like be a that. Clone for me. I've got really good exposure right there. I've got two, three nodes up top. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these sides. Reason being, one, it keeps Whoa. things from transpiring as hard, so it helps for a little bit of water retention. Two, I like to see when it's actually started so growing, so you can actually see that it's nice and cut. But also when you put it in a tray, it's not gonna be all over each other. It yeah. also helps from the plant, especially with the way we clone directly into clone cups from falling over as much. It just helps everything stay nice and nice and straight. Shit. So that would be that would be for me a real nice clone. So let me ask you really And then we've quick, got though. four tops here ready to rock. Oh, it's beautiful. Come on. That Ooh. is beautiful right there. Are you gonna take those bottom ones as long as we're a grow show? Let me see that thing really yep. quick and them scissors. Yep. Now, I would not be opposed to taking that bottom one I'd off right now, to be honest with you. guys right yep. there. And probably this one. You can one, take that one out too. too close. Yep. I've got myself two nice big tops there. Yep, yep. And some people even use those bottom for clones. I like taking clones mm. from the top myself. I think, you know, there was some, if anybody remembers, some of the, the popular um, books back in the day told yeah. us, take them out the bottom. That's where the, the root, the growth the hormone, hormone. Yeah, root hormone. Uh, not exactly true. Um, and I really prefer the vigor off the top. The other thing is, if you take something off the side, the plant's going to start morphologically growing from where it came from. So if you take a top, it's actually going to start, you know, growing straight over the top. If you take it off the side, it's thinking it's a lateral branch still so it's going to start you know growing a little bit wacky so that's another reason i like to take them up top but i like the good hard woody clones which is contrary to popular belief but also the way that, that that i like to clone and this is the exact way it's done here with this cup and cup 
you got to have something that's got some rigidity to be able to stick it directly in cocoa, which I like doing pure cocoa and not cocoa perlite for that exact reason. And even that would be a fine clone. It's not a pretty clone, but it's a fine clone. I had a clone stuck to my jeans, man. <laughs> <laughs> so well, Anna was happy to see it. Look how surgeon so, that is. Again, huh. this right here, this is a beautiful plant to now start with. Right. You've already started shaping it. You've already started focusing it into the notes that you want. You've already opened up. Naturally, these are going to get nice mm -hmm. tall. You're going to top those again. At yep. that point, you'll get four, you'll get six, you'll get eight, and you can really work it from there. So when people say, when do you prune? I say, really, from the very, very beginning. Yep. Um, and I like to keep things clean. Uh, you know, you just have... Less area for for bugs to take hold. You have less areas for things to hide. You have you know less less uh, uh, um, uh, just. I feel like all around issues. To be honest with you, I just like the more airflow. I like more light in there. You know, even for any kind of nutrient issues, you can absolutely see what's going on in there. So part of it is like you know if it's a jungle in there, I, that's the only time I've ever killed plants when it's like oops. Couldn't see that one. Didn't realize it was completely dry. <laughs> see this, but stuff I can right see there. This, you know, gets you in the trouble. You That's what gets you in you trouble. Leave this stuff in here. The bugs can go. There's not a lot of wind. The wind's all up here. All this is fair game. Don't forget, this is slow growth. This is the oldest growth. That leaf isn't. It's all that can as be much gone. as that leaf. Yeah. yeah. And that's just something that the bugs attack the weak. Man. Yep. 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 So, I mean, we're always just trying to have really good, strong plants. And, you know, even when I used to, to, to think about organic, you know, food production and, and, and vegetable production, it's, it's not about, you know, learning all this stuff about different organic sprays you can use and this and that. First and foremost, you're trying to raise and, and culture a really strong plant. You know, something that can defend itself. You know, plants do have things called like SAR things, which is systemic acquired resistance. They do have defense mechanisms that are set up. Now, we can use things to help initiate those, those processes as well, or we can let it happen naturally. Obviously, if we initiate it before an attack, we're ready for the attack, sure. right? They've been here before us. They'll be here after us. You know what I mean? They make their own food, uh, you know. Don't Mike drop. <laughs> you know? It is amazing. The thing was, a 500 million years the plants have been around. The fungi have been around for another 500 million years before that. It is amazing. It is. It is. And so you know they 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 know what they're doing. Um, as we talked about on the show before. You know, we're not growers, we're plant janitors. <laughs> you know, we don't grow shit. Okay, let's be honest. The plant grows itself. Right. You know, and they're very amazing. And all we really need to do is sit there and help culture that. And and, and definitely these pruning techniques and whatnot does help, you know, that happen. I mean, you, you gotta understand, you know, humans have had the ability over selection over thousands of years, and not only cannabis, but in vegetable crops to really get what we're looking for out of it, right? Sure. So we're trying to accentuate whatever is of horticultural significance. If that's a strawberry plant. That's the strawberries. And a cannabis plant, that's the oil, right? So really, we're oil farmers. And I like to really let people, you know, and I, I know people have heard me say it before, but I like to hammer that point home because if you think like that and you understand what you're actually going for, you don't get as weirded out about, you know, hacking on a plant like sure. this. You understand, well, I, my goal is to maximize oil production on, on very uh, uh, specialized flowering sites that have the ability, ability to maximize growth, you know? So... This is obviously how you'd start doing it when you talk about much later, you yeah, know. I got a question for you, man. Yes, because I'm into it, man. I got my PPFD meter, which, by the way, you can use your phone, phone tone app. But a uh, photo. <laughs> All right, now I know. I'm, oh, it's I'm, good. I'm, I'm, it's good. I'm downloading it. I actually have a meter, but what do you put these under? I got mine under 350, 375 PPFD. I think that's just fine. Two, three, four hundred. The yeah. idea, though, I want to express is that if you put them under not enough light, these will be scraggly. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, and even I've even done this. Ready? I've done that before, man. Yeah, I've got another top. Yeah, and and what that's actually doing by doing that without losing a node, mm -hmm. you're still breaking apical dominance. So that would be called a classic super crop. Is really what that is. As long as you went to school for it, apical merge them, the top of the plant right yeah. there, top, and then I'm just saying apical dominance means it's got to shade everything. Well, what, yeah, exactly. What's happening is the the Ooh. apical merge stem puts out auxins. Auxins uh, reduce lateral branching growth. So that's why it's going to grow more like a Christmas tree mm -hmm. if you have that apical merge stem sure. off. Take the apical merge stem off, and it is actually a product of distance, and that's why the bottom ones are the farthest out and it literally looks like that Christmas tree kind of thing. You take off that apical maricem, the auctions are no longer there to reduce that. You ever read the seed catalog? It'll be like, don't talk this one. I think it was like skunk number one was like that, where it just let it go, do it in small buckets or Dutch table method. You know, well, yeah. one, just... I think the Dutch style, and I think I'm glad you brought that up, the classic, you know, 
hundred pots in, in, you know, six, eight six inch, you know, so yeah, yeah, just yeah. tiny, Eagle right? Rocks. Real sea of green, true sea, which they were only doing single cola. So there are absolutely plants, and I could name a couple that I've worked with that just don't even take to this technique much. They'll turn right around and go, Whoop, and just like, they have that ability. They're like, they don't like to be topped, you know what I mean? So um, I think that's probably just one that they noticed that, hey, this this isn't something that takes well, doesn't really give you that candelabra effect. Right. All it's going to do is take that node below it and just wrap it right back around and go up again. Sure. You know what I mean? Now, um, I would also say like in the, in the, in the, the vegetable world, that would be something between like you wouldn't want to um, top a uh, indeterminate plant. So like a tomato that's indeterminate, that's more vine-like, yes. you would not want to top that. You'd want to top a determinate one that has, um, you know, a, a determined, determinate amount of growth. And then that's actually going to spawn that lateral branch and growth and things like that. So if you happen to see that in, in vegetable seed catalogs or something like that, yeah. that's where that thought process comes from. Suspension well. tomatoes and Proper greenhouse practices, which sure. which seems to be where we're going. Oh, I, I'd say undoubtedly, like, like in the in true the, ag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the way of horticulture, and if you look at things, I mean, it's going to come out of the basement into the warehouse, and from the warehouse into into the greenhouse, and and even in some scenarios from the greenhouse into field production, depending whether it's industrial or or THC production. But yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's that's what I'm worried about. I called Banner last night, and it was a couple nights ago, whenever it was, and I go check out this comment, and this is by. Is it Goofy RU 26 says genetically modified. I think we're talking about genetically modified cannabis if it's coming. Uh, start reading. Uh, we're talking if when you uh, just breathe, mm -hmm. are you genetically modifying things when you uh, takes, uh, you know, reverse the sex and then sure. read it again with itself? Sure. Back yeah. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not using CRISPR, but it's certainly modifying the genes. So uh, it says uh, Goofy RU 26 genetically modified. Start reading on what Humboldt Seed Company is doing with triploids. Curious what the DGC, DGC's thoughts are on this. Keep on growing. And I call it triploids. You, triploids? Triploids. You yeah, yeah, because it's triple. It's, it's three sets of genes. And so that's why what it is is those are sterile. Okay, so you can't, you're not going to get any viable seeds off of that. So that's really the point of doing that. So number one, they're protecting their genetics, yeah. essentially. By the way, just real quick, seedless watermelon. Is a that's, right? yeah, absolutely. They, yeah. And I was okay. going to pull that right sure. in. And not only that, um, uh, Cap has claimed that the MAC-1 is is a triploid. And that's why people have always had trouble getting any level of seed production on it. In fact, and most of them were weren't even viable the features they get yeah Grant, so that you haven't talked yet tell us what a triploid is man you're let's get let's get yeah let's get the, the, let's get the, the I definition mean, i mean i don't really remember i didn't go to school like you're right but i remember it's like a rare chromosomal abnormality if you know it has like additional sets of I think I do know that it was one. Like 69 cents or something? Yeah, like instead of the 46, so. it's 69, right? It's one more set of chromosomes. <coughs> We're just reading the Google thing. Man. And but but the point is, is it doesn't match up with another diploid, right? And so because that's what they <laughs> What'd you call me? Hey, what, what'd you say? <laughs> um, and even some plants can be up to octoploids. Uh, you know, and even have up to eight sets of genes, which that's what really makes plants partially so amazing is that they can go into that genetic base. Is this ever natural? Um that's a really, really good question. I would say there is probably some mutations that would you'd find this naturally somewhere where I know it mostly is in the in the vegetable, the seedless world. Sure. Um, probably the most common being the seedless watermelon. Bananas. Now I think sure you're the modern I, banana is. I feel like you're right about that. I yeah. feel like you're right about that. You can't have mentioned bananas without telling you that they're all going away. There's a fungus that's eating the bananas. Well, no, yeah, that citrus greening is happening. I actually have a friend that's working with the University of Central Florida. Oh, yeah. I on their citrus Florida, greening. Bro. I mean, there's no, you can't get orange juice in Florida anymore. There ain't, there's no oranges. I mean, not no. It's, nobody, nobody. It's sad, no, bro. Yeah, it is. We talk about shipping clones Tell over Brazil. And, yeah. And why they people give a shit about shipping clones and all that, and why they can get confiscated possibly, it's because they don't want diseases going from Texas or California to yeah. Florida and back and forth. It's wild. It's a big deal. They're doing a bunch of this like crazy CRISPR stuff right there on campus, but then they have like it's something like eight rows of citrus that surrounds the whole greenhouse to catch any possibility of rampant pollen yeah. going out stuff like i mean it's like man, that's some cool shit wow. i mean you can talk about like you know what do you want to you know believe in an or whatever but it's pretty interesting the, the links that they go through and the stuff they have to do to like 
you know, try and like save the industry. I mean, that's a I mean, I don't don't I don't know the numbers, but I'm going to call it a billion dollar industry, or at least once was, you know, in Florida, which is a massive agricultural state. So, you know, things like this. Oh, we do have. Is that true? Are we are we a yes on the? But it, oh, they are triple Okay, you nailed it. Right the on. Only certain variety. But these right. are the Cavendish the ones for sure. Yes. The Cavendish, yes. which are which are not, or at least uh, that's the big commercial variety. Right. They can't stop what's going on there. I can't remember what fungus it is, but there is a fungus just. And they call it decimating. Yeah, it's well, just... in 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 the, the problem is is that's when the issue when you have these monocrop situations in and, and you essentially allow something which is typically something that's non-endemic, so a non-endemic species or a non-endemic insect. So it'd be similar to like what's happening with our ash trees, and you have an emerald ash borer that comes in that's originally from Asia. We have nothing to predate it. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to slow it down. The weather patterns aren't such that it knocks it out or whatever. Sure. What's to stop Monsanto from doing that with cannabis, with triploid cannabis? Because now, if you don't have to worry about it seeding up, you can just uh, throw what's fields it? and fields of the reality is what's to stop it? Nothing. 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 No, I mean, and, and, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, nothing. You know, this is you're going to see. So I don't like triploids then. Man. Well, but well, here's the thing, you know, and I'm not saying I do or don't either. I, I think, like progress. Um, you know, I look at it the same thing. Like when we go down to the farmer's market, we have heirloom varieties and things like that, which are which are. Well, the only thing the heirloom really needs is something that's been collected over time. You know, and typically it's also been passed and traded and things like that, right? So the heirloom tomatoes, which is the, you know, the most popular um, example. But if you ever go to like rareseeds.org, which is Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company, it's the largest heirloom seed company in the world. They've got, you want to talk about some seed porn? I mean, get on there. Is that <laughs> category? <laughs> <Seed porn. laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's that. Do you Writing go and it must have 20 seed pages seed of porn. different. Dude, I dare uh, you to Google it. <laughs> that, that's one you might want no. to be. We were <laughs> we were stop. we were googling. Oh, we were googling. That's Google a brave Google. Juice. We were ge- we were googling before this, and I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. We were googling some chemistry terms uh, initially that I won't even say that may or may not. Work out well for me and my algorithm and Google. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were chemistry terms. I was doing some research recently <laughs> about how crazy things in our are. And I just go, how much is a kilo of fentanyl? <laughs> and I Googled it. Um, I'm sure I'm on a list. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Knock, knock, knock. That's $2,000. Um, well, yeah, well, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> That's, That's affordable. I want to see it's such a mess. So you're going to see, but my point is, is you're going to see, you're going to see, you know, conventional agriculture. You're going to see horticulture. You're going to see, you know, agronomy. You're going to see a lot of different things. You're going to see more mechanization. I mean, the reality is, if it's if it's coming out and that's the direction it's going, but that doesn't mean that people can't hold on to certain things and you know have heirloom genetics and you know do some of their own breeding and still be a, a small you know community that that did come out of the basements. I mean, the reality is the people that were doing this before are as what's predicated and everything's really on the shoulders of these people. You know what I mean? And uh, things are going to change. I mean, that's one of the things I've seen, especially. You know, the cannabis world has changed really fast, like really Well, because it went from people in their basements that were getting the information from their friends at the grow store right. to being able to hire the bug lady to come and inspect your uh, your greenhouse. To, to sending leaf tissue IBM sample program. analysis to the, the exactly. university, to sending things in the mail to get sexed, to, you know, all these things. Mm-hmm. To hell, the USPS going, huh? You don't know this, dude. So you're here. Yeah, but no matter You know what I mean? Like, I love it. <laughs> so I, it's it does. And though. so, so with all these things, you know, change is going to happen. And obviously, humans hate change naturally. You know, we're always like that's just we're, we're we're old man on my lawn kind of shit about change. Really, and that's just how it is. It's change. It's change. So the sooner you actually accept that. Really, the better off you are. So, do I like all the changes? No. You know, have I seen a lot of the community that in cannabis has been lost? Yeah, but I also think places like this, the DGC, is something that has preserved that feeling. And and the events you guys do, and the connection you guys do, it's you don't you don't. I mean, hell, way to grow Fort Collins shut down. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So you talk about like that, that was the barber shop. Remember when we were going there back in the day? Yeah. We and it was like, from there. Like it, it's like that's yes. Yeah. In the tents <laughs> upstairs. Yes. I was there. Um, and you know, and to think like, oh my gosh, like that, you know, really like what's now would be considered a relic 
of the cannabis industry is is gone. So, I mean, you know, if those aren't indications and, and pointers that things are changing, then I don't know what is. But so. home grow, as, we got, as long as we can preserve home grow, as long as we can go to our neighbors, yes. our friend's house, yes. exactly what happened allegedly here, Yep. Um, which is we all just traded bud and we're showing sure. our bud that we grew ourselves. Yep. Uh, as long as we can preserve that, I really am okay with having cannabis right next to the Marlboro cigarettes. Or I would, I would, it doesn't offend me, man. I just want to be able to get. I would say, I would say, I would agree with that, and I would say that's why I've always been a proponent. And said any state that's talking about legalization without a home grow component is a bullshit law, yeah, and, and should just go in the trash. So, yeah. you know, that's so three things in my mind. There should always be uh, an allowance for hemp. There should always be an allowance for home growing, and there should be a, uh, an allowance for university research. And if all of those three things for me, and this is my opinion, if those aren't in uh, a law for legalization, a throw in the trash. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, it's a sham. Yeah, it's a sham. So no schedule. No, no. Yeah, that's everything. Get off the schedule. What yeah. schedule? There should be no schedule. Now, I'm happy to see, you know, at least a change, at least something. But, you know, eh, you know, yeah, banking's know easier. That. That schedule three stuff, sounds like man. schedule three puts home grow at risk. That's why I'm saying. And it's big farm again. Here, the family tree cannabis company <laughs> says best you schedule. Yeah. I mean, booze is literally poison for people. Uh, make a drink and get effed up, and it's fully legal. I have friends that own small craft breweries. Hypocritical, in my opinion. It's all about the money, as always. And just remember that. The world works on money, well, yeah, so, and yeah. it's all about the money, yeah. as always. I mean, you can sit here with all the alcoholism problems we have, and I'm just going to play devil's advocate, and I like drinking beer, by the way. Uh, and, and and I live in a place that has a lot of craft brewing. But it's like, you know, you can, literally have, you can literally have people that are like, well, you know, I literally make my whole living and my whole life process is making an intoxicant. That's fucking it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, you know way, what I mean? Like, let, let's, be, let's be real. That's an intoxicant that if you mess up and do four or five times the recommended dose, which is really easy to do with all the peer pressure and all Oh, the, considering the recommended dose is what? One um, beer? It's one. So my <laughs> point is, if you go into a place and they go, Jaren, come on, do a shot with me. And then you end up doing two shots in an hour, maybe drinking a beer. And then if you're going to leave, you are impaired it's, right. a, it's a chemical impairment it's measurable right, right. it's I'm, not your blood alcohol level you only have a certain amount of blood the amount of alcohol you put yeah. in there is in there and and to me it's very interesting that we you know are still like fighting against that when we have one that's like oh yeah you know hmm, it's part of the you know, i can i can you know it, you, you still have a stigma on some level for being a grower or being involved in that which is obviously a lot less than it was you know, one oh, day, yeah. but you know, the stigma of a, of a, a brewer or a distiller or something like that. It's like, Oh yeah, right on. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I've thought they about that often. It's interesting. They figured out how to have real beer and three, two beer and exist. Right. But there's so, a lot what, of money going into taxes from beer. What's the alcohol tax and how much are they putting in the politicians pockets well, or campaigns? Well, like I'm just me like craft beer, mm -hmm. right? You like that exists, and then you can go to the supermarket or wherever and buy mass produced beer. Yeah, and they both exist. And I agree, like, you know, there's no reason that, and there's no reason that cannabis you shouldn't can be, be the same way. I, and I agree. Yeah, it's, Look, it's you can get a two or twelve dollar six pack down there at Wilbur's every day of the week. You want some Keystone, they got Keystone. Or, you want some Odell's, you can get some Odell's, or if you want to brew at home. You can do that Go too. Go for it. To a certain point. To a certain extent. Yeah, and right? that, there's actual real laws about that. It's like, I think it's, don't quote me, it's like 100 gallons a year or something right. per person you can legally brew. Exactly. All right, so that's the same thing with our plant counts. I, I feel like that's fair. I, I, yeah, who needs more than 100 gallons a Yeah, beer, I right? feel like that's fair. <laughs> hey, hey. Who needs to come to my house and inspect it, though, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I think, but that's also, that's that's always kind of our, Does you anybody know, do that, though? Like, is there any protocol for that? Well, there is here in the state of, or in, in the state of Colorado and in the city of Fort Collins, 100%. Really? For producing uh, beer? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, 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 you, well, I, I, I mean, I say, we know for cannabis for sure technically for beer too i'm not saying okay, okay. I I gonna gonna say, yeah i'm gonna say a very very low level the point the point is is that all isn't all of that supported by the the local culture and the yeah. people so it's kind of like what the people want so yeah. I, what's more important than that have you noticed something man that they don't seem to be asking the local people what they want they seem to be convincing the masses that this is what we have to do Nobody cares about local. Yeah, well, there's no money in convincing the local people. Yeah. That's yeah. All right. yeah That's yeah. why it's so important, damn it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. And we, and we digress. So but box. there's, you know, yeah. And, and, and again, I always should be a homegrown component. We should also always have homegrown. There's always have people that are out there that, for the love of the plant, trying to just 
grow the best herb they can. And I, and I, and I believe we've got people in this community that are absolutely doing that. And that's one of the reasons I do love coming and connecting with you guys because dude, this isn't, it isn't as prevalent as it used to be. I guess it's the whole kind of beginning it's of this was like that, that, that prevalence of just that, that underground culture and the barbershop and all sure. that. It's like, now it's, you know, it's a lot more commercial and it's a lot more of this. So it's, it's a lot less of this community stuff. So keep up the community folks. Yes, absolutely. But I was talking, can't remember. It was a question like, is it better or worse with the light better or worse with social media? A billion times better for me. I get to make friends and hang out with, uh, with I get to see what you're up to. When, sure. you, when you go to one of them concerts, I get to see it, man. With, I, but, one of them fish concerts, man. One of them fish well, concerts. That's what it's like inside there, man. It's wild. Yeah. Um, I would say that as with anything, and I think it's really important with social media and things like that, it's moderation. You know, can you use it positively? Absolutely. Can can there can it be very negative in people's lives? Do I think kids should be running around with smartphones? Fuck, it's hard enough to be a kid. P- kids are mean. Like to go to be able to not you used to be able to go home and escape. That's that's the f- most fucked up thing about social media and, and phones and stuff like that is you should be able to go and have a place where there's a safe zone. There's no safe zone when your little leash goes with you everywhere. People can accost you. People can can you know like you can't get away from it. That I think is the biggest problem. So I think a lot of people's lives are worse because of social media, but that's also partially their fault. Does that make sense? You know what? That is one of the things I absolutely love about the dude is that he can get away from it. He never bought into any of that, man. He had a flip phone for the longest time. You know? The only, I've, so I cool, never have had man. Facebook. The only thing I've ever had is Instagram. And I'll tell you the only reason I Instagram, and I was like five years late to the to the table, was sure, because of work. this. With, because of work. Yeah. That's it. It's still the only one I've ever had. Uh, I can tell you, I'm not good on it either. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, you know, but it's allowed me to connect with a lot of people. I will say it's done really good things for, you know, my my uh, allowance to link up with people in this business. Sure. And Big time. get good information. I yes. tell you what, I'm going to use it as a shameless segue. You brought me a Cilicium. This is... Uh, a I, lot of Cilicium. I, 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 yeah, I, I got a, a little chub when I say it. <laughs> Is mono silicic or ortho silicic? Yeah. I want to learn about uh, silica. Uh, and I consider silica IPM. When I think about silica, I'm really trying to dumb it down to someone. I, it makes the plant a little chewier. <laughs> Obviously, what it does when the insect goes to either bite it or stick it, whatever, in there. It's just so tillering it's mouth parts. It's sticky, man. It's not even sticky. It's just like silica. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so the big difference is, is you have, you know, monoorthosilicic acid, which is a bioavailable form of potassium Super, silicate. Those are the ones you see and you almost drop dead when you it, see the price, right? Well, that it used to. This one now is about, so silicic, or sorry, Facilitor when it first came on the market was like $400 retail a liter. Yeah, yeah. Now okay. you can get this for like, 120 bucks a liter. And, a liter and that does 2,000 gallons. Yeah. So, like, the price per gallon is rather low. These All right. Days. So, help me out. I used to use uh, potassium silicate. Yes. And what I learned is that it has a decent, you're paying for a decent amount of potassium. Sure. That, uh, you know, there's, uh, what is it, three parts potassium? I don't know. I'd be bad if I tried to try to think of a chemical formulation. <laughs> but it's a decent amount of potassium and a decent amount of silicate in right. there. Uh, you used to use five mils per gallon. Sure. It kind of makes sense because you're adding a lot of potassium. You need a little more to achieve that amount of silica. These are what, a half a milligram? Those are half a milligram. And the big difference is the reason you were in five mils versus a half a mil is you're using it 10 times the strength of potassium silicate. Yeah. It's because potassium silicate is not readily available. It actually has to be broken down over time into this form, SIH402. Okay. So um, that's really, so that's what mononortho silicic acid, which by the way, those terms are synonymous. You can Google that. Mononortho, that's just a chemistry term. I believe it has something to do with their shape. I'm no chemist. Anytime um, I see something with that's a half mil per gallon, I should I should know that that's monosilicic or ortho silicic. Yeah. Uh, I would say that's definitely going to give you a good indicator what that that's them, what it is. I mean, I'm throwing you a softball here. I'm sure. sure this is a good quality product. What makes one better than the other? Am I just shopping price on it? Bioavailability. Okay. Price is important, but yeah. bioavailability is more important because you can have mono and ortho silicic acid in a very large molecule right. that needs to actually be broken up over time to have these little monomers and dimers and trimers that are readily available and uptakeable that can be water soluble and uptaken with, with mass flow. So um, even facilitor, if people remember when it first came out, they would tell you bubble it for 24 hours first. Reason was that was a big mono and ortho silicic acid 
molecule that if you bubbled it over time, it was knocking off these smaller molecules. And that's what actually became water soluble. So this is stabilized in a way that is proprietary. And this is the original people. So the guy we get this from, his dad is who. If you bought insurance for your grow, come on guys. If not, go to pulsegrow.com, get the pulse monitors. They are insurance for the grow, notify you when humidity is off, temperature, lights are on and off at the wrong time, equipment failures, power outages, all emailed and or texted to you immediately. So you can get the data, keep growing the dank and have everything on point. And while you're at pulsegrow.com, make sure you click on their learn tab, guys. They have all types of great guides on VPD, CO2, a VPD calculator. And if you don't know what VPD is, Head on over there, pulsegrow.com, coupon code DUDE across the board will hook you up on Pulse Grow products. Protect your grow, get notified when something goes wrong. They stable it with a at a very low pH, which is one of the reasons it actually drops the pH a little bit, as opposed to raising the pH or using a potassium silicon. Right. So this will drop at only about 0.1, uh, 0.1 is it. But the reason it does, that's it's stabilized in a very low pH. And it stabilizes monomers, dimers, and trimers. One, two, and three molecules of orthosilicic acid. When it hits water, it immediately becomes water uh, uh, soluble. All becomes monomers, all of them. So even the dimers and trimers break up into monomers monomers become immediately water soluble, going with mass flow. Again, remember I said SiO4H, uh, uh, sorry, SiH4O2. It's going to go up. It's going to be deposited in the cell walls as SiO2. Um, and that's Wait. what strengthens the, uh, the, uh, the silica dioxide. Sure. That's what's going to strengthen the cell walls. And then the rest of it's transpired as H2O. Look at the, you don't have to be a chemist to look at the, the chemical and go, oh, I can see the SiO2 there and I can see the H HO2 go, or H2O going there. Yeah. So if it's not fully water soluble, one, it's not gonna be readily available immediately. Right. Maybe it would be later, sure. like let's say later in the week, uh, later in a reservoir or something like that. But some are even, there's even ones out there that claim a very high amount in the bottle, but then when they're actually put into water, it almost all becomes converted into SiO2, which is not even obtainable by the plant. So there's a lot of, this is kind of an interesting world that like right. some, some claims can be made that aren't necessarily lies, but it's not telling the whole story, which is common here in the world of cannabis. Well, because there's people like me that are just trying slinging crap against the wall sure, and, sure. and seeing what works. Sure. Thankfully, with silica, yeah, there's a visual representation there is. of what works when I, they get shiny. They so, look like and, they have an and, interest. You know, and even, and they do. That's the, the visual representation. I mean, there was one that was even, and it was a real modern ortho that I saw years ago, and it just said plant vigor on it. And I liked that description of it because it gave somebody an idea of what the hell is this even doing? Right. Giving you that plant vigor, giving you those more rigid cell walls. Truthfully, what it is, and even answer your question as I take this full circle, like I've done this before, um, yes, it's part of IPM. What's IPM? IPM is an integrated pest management system. So that is pesticides, that is fungicides, that is environment, that is many different things. That's BRICS levels even, like really thinking about different levels at different times. And this being something that because it is so water soluble and bioavailable, in fact, it's so bioavailable, it's considered a biostimulant, if you can believe that. And because of that, I, I can believe it. Uh, okay, I can, I can believe uh, and because of that, it reduces it. it reduces any and all abiotic and biotic stresses. And what that would mean would be any any pests and diseases and viruses, things like that, along with with desiccation, freezing, uh, uh, heat, things like that. So it's literally right. protecting itself on both sides. Come on, big word, man. No, teach me, man. Abiotic <laughs> and, uh, and biotic. So abiotic being yeah, non biological. Outside, yeah, that's a bug, right? Uh, biotic would be so biology. Think about bi biotic would be anything would be bugs, pests, diseases, things that are okay. alive. Abiotic stresses would be uh, stresses that aren't alive. So desiccation, heat, cold, things like that. I love it. I'm so glad I asked. So, 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 yes, absolutely. Part of a good IPM program. And also for the people that would ask, can you fuller it? Because that's always a, a common question. The answer is absolutely. And in fact, it becomes a very mechanical thing when you're fullering it too, because they're really, really small little tunnels that go through the cuticle layer uh, uh, on the edge of the leaf. And if it's too big of a molecule, it can't get through that little tunnel. So having yeah, very, very small the, the molecules, um, and you can do it up to, to yeah, it's just little holes in the cuticle in the wax layer. Yeah. Um, use it two mils a gallon, fuller feeding. And in reality- Two mils a gallon? Two mils a gallon, fuller Glad feeding. Yep. I asked, man. Yep, yep, I know. Um, and, no, thank you. And Great very, info. very effective as a fuller feed. Probably the best, because it's uh, stabilized in such small molecule wow, forms, okay. probably the best way to use it. Add reality. Yep. Excellent. Banner, 
I'm so <laughs> dude, could you imagine that, man? You didn't yeah. get a chance to talk much. Uh, Do you do IPM at all? Yeah, for sure. That's just something people say. <laughs> you had right. to. All right, what's your IPM, bro? Uh, I have a mix of the usual stuff, like uh, see? the see? doctor's eyes and. Oh yeah, and yeah. you do. Uh, I tell you what, man. We got the, we got the man here. I, when I talked to you a couple of days ago, you yep. were talking to me. I was like, "Hey, what's new?" You were like, "Oh, we're getting into IPM a little bit." Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. What is you? I, you're a great grower, man. Hey, do we have any pictures of that weed? Are we allowed to show it? I mean, we were just plants. Yeah, and he it. said <laughs> F bombs about five times. I man, think it so. was only two. I counted two. We're fine. I counted two. Fine, I try and keep man. them to a minimum. I counted two. Um, We've done okay with age gating, man. So. Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell yeah, me, our man. boy Grambo is keeping it keeping it uh, real in the background. Tight so, work. interestingly Give enough, Banner's new part of his new IPM program, and that's what's nice about it too, right? IPM integrated, so it's you can continue to keep integrating new things. So, the Cytetics line is is another line that is uh, distributed by Five A Distribution, right alongside New Millennium, and it is geared for commercial production. So, there's a liquid three part. Uh, there's going to be a a dry two part, a dry three part, someone you could batch tank, one you can stock tank. Uh, there's a there's a full VTech that's basically similar to Ruby, but without the bacteria. So it runs a little bit cleaner in drift production, things like that. Okay. So also as part of that, we have the EcoWorks, which functions as the spreader sticker, right? So that's going to be uh, um, uh, uh, something that's used. You kind of consider your A, but it's a cold press anemone is what it is. So the gentleman that's behind this was, he did Pyganic, he did as a as a direct and as a troll, or sorry, not as a direct. So he's the, the neem guy. guy he's man. the neem guy. Neem is a tree. Neem is a tree out yep. of uh, India. Music. He's an Indian guy. This has been his life work. He's worked with with uh, neem extracts and botanical extracts Just for so 30 to 40 years. As a direct and is the, as long as we're, we're dropping. We're dropping science. We're dropping man. science. That's a natural Galileo insecticide. Galileo dropped an arm. So <laughs> Azadiractin is the active ingredient in neem. In neem, yeah. Kind of like THC being squeezed out of yeah. cannabis. The, 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 the issue is, you know, there's a couple things you can do, and that's why you've seen like azatrol and things like that, and that's more of a concentration or even pyganic, but that's more of a synthetic form of azadiractin. But yes, naturally, azadiractin is in neem. Now, if it's chemically <laughs> extracted, that azadiractin is damaged. So this is a cold-pressed natural. So, um, so it preserves... The natural acid are acting in there and acts as a natural fungicide. It also um, uh, has some nitrogen and some micronutrients. So it kind of operates as a little bit of a fuller spray too. But but think about it as a surfactant in the system. So you've got this here in the middle. So surfactant, I'm thinking, is going to allow it, it's going to lessen the amount. Exactly. Of, uh, and the surface normal. tension and all that kind of stuff. It help it keep emulsified but in when the I solution. Think, and just because I've... Uh, the service tension is like you got a bubble of water, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it can either be this bubble or you can make it flat. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 And so it just helps flat, everything it stick. It, and yeah. And yep. when it's flat, also, it doesn't have that magnifying glass effect where it'll Correct. burn. That's what they say. Oh, spray. You can't spray with the lights on. Well, if you, if you use a sticker spreader yep. or something like that, yep. you can. And that's how this functions in here. So this is used in conjunction with these two. This is called the russet. It's the only thing on the market that actually has russet right there on the bottle. I don't know of anything else that actually calls that out specifically. Potatoes. So anything, uh, <laughs> anything that is uh, any kind of mites, any kind of spider mites, anything really? kind of broad mites, things like that. That's what that's focused on. All right, give so me your again, IPM though, man. What do you? What frequency? What so, are you doing, so you're man? using this, and basically, I go back and forth every week to two weeks. So you never use these in conjunction. You use these back and forth. The multi is uh, focuses as a fungicide, right? And then also any other bugs like thrips, things like that. Sure. So the multi is kind of the. Uh, multi kind of everything and then russ it's more specific for mites i go back and forth on these this is really sure. my full ipm program currently what do you do when you bring in new clones in when i bring in new clones um you know first off i hit them very hard with this and i do this 10 mils a gallon and this is for for knockdown and i do that's both the of name. these that's the name that's right? the name in conjunction with one and then the other but if I do that 10 mils a gallon, yeah. I'm doing either of these at 30 mils a gallon. And then I'm just going to flip-flop as close as even up to three days apart if you really want to really hit. Sure. Them. When when do you uh, stop? So I stop personally right when I get good butt sets. I'll go up to about three weeks in flower. So I'll even still – now at that, so preventative is is more of a 515 – as opposed to knockdown. So when I'm when I'm in flower there, but once I start getting any oil, because these are oils themselves, these are and these are all 25B, so they're all um, it, this is registered all over That's the US. Fit, fit so bro, it is generally recognized as safe. Yeah, exactly. So and it's exempt no from some of the yeah, exactly. There's no weird insecticides. Yeah. You know what I mean? So 
you know, to be honest, I'm sure he should wear gloves, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> no, I dig it, man. Very cool. I think I'm is one of those things. It's but, one of those things that easy to slack on. Hey, everything's going great. It man. is. It is. Why should have changed the oil? It's it's nothing. Here's my my personal opinion is don't wait to see something. Of course, you know, just don't don't wait to see something. And these are things that are pretty easy on the plants in general, and I'll have. I mean, I've got multiple things that are sitting on the shelf that I haven't used in years, but they're there. You know, yeah. so it's like you can like bust something out that's they haven't Zero seen before tolerance. or whatever. Yeah, green you know. cleaner. Yeah, yep. exactly. And I mean, I over the years I've used plant therapy. I've used green cleaner. I've used the BioSafe stuff. I've used you know SNS two seventeen. I mean, I mean, dude, throw it out there, and I probably sprayed it on a plane. Man, I still have you know. a little SM ninety left. They, yeah, just a case, just a case. Uh, <laughs> Rambo drinks the Guardian. But you know, a couple vials keep, left over. Keeping in mind, keeping <coughs> in mind the environment, I think is is incredibly important, especially when you talk about you know fungus and things like that. But also, you know, when you're talking about even dip, you know difference in let's say eighty two to eighty four or eighty five degrees, that can be difference in a, oh, in a in a magnification level of reproduction in certain insects. Let's talk about that because that's why you keep your plant, you keep your room sixty eight seventy degrees. I mean, that might be a little bit cool. That it, is a little bit cool. That is a little cool, and I would say for sure for LEDs these days, and that's kind of what changes. But the reason being is one hundred percent grow slower. Man. So and yep. bugs grow a lot slower. Yep, and you Nobody have a chance to come out at 68 anymore, can they? No, no. I mean, uh, you can go like don't go to 90s. Between 80 and 90 is exponential growth of bugs, man. Grant, yeah. I don't know if you can find a there's uh, there's chart really quick. There's it. something that I don't even know what you'd ask. <laughs> exponential he's a, growth of bugs. He's, he's like he's like Jamie on yeah. Joe Rogan. He, he finds. Oh, by the way. Shit. We had a format. I had a format because uh, I was going to hang with dude. And then at the last minute, we just all decided to bullshit because <laughs> who's the, is the dude going to get a word in, please? Uh, but we are so far off at Grambo. Thank you for rolling with us, brother. You're a true professional. <laughs> well, we did, you know, we got to, I, you know, I, I, I always, I do like Go talking about. images, see what you can find. I, and, and, you know, why he's, you know, got this going. I do like, the, the, you know, getting some of this, uh, um, Science on on potassium silica and silicic acid, and just kind of what is because I think there's a lot of oh, mis- yeah. you know misinformation you know out there on 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 certain things, and so that one's always kind of a fun one to talk it's, about. It's beneficial. This even just putting a little bit of silica in is yeah. is beneficial, and it's easy to do. And- well, and that's a classic example of a plant beneficial, but not a plant essential nutrient, right? So there's 17 plant essential that science has proven, which undoubtedly there's more than that. We ah, just can't. That's actually okay. really cool. Sorry, Graham, but I sent you down a rabbit hole. <laughs> it goes a lot, a lot bigger. It does. Man, it right? is exponentially. And exponential, as we all know, means 10 times. Yes. It okay. Does. So that's 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 it's a big deal. <laughs> that's a big deal. So why does decimating mean destroying? And isn't decimating just 10? Wouldn't it mean just killing 10 percent? Well, th- why? Because you're attaching it to decibel. Yeah, or no, deca. Uh, isn't deca mean deca? Ten. Ten. Yeah. Yeah. Must have a different word origin. Yeah. One in every ten. Whoa! Ah, thank you, you bro. One in every ten. Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a, that's a bunch. So mm-hmm. it's not kill, destroy, remove a large percentage. Ten percent is a large percentage. Mm-hmm. Kill See what you think about ten. when you're smoking weed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Speaking of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I you know, I, I do like people to keep in mind IPM is many different things. It's not just sprays. You know, it, it, it's a lot of different things, including even the nutrient program. I mean, again, if you're, you know, or even your irrigation program, right. like if you're, you know, watering too hard in conjunction with with bad humidity and temperature levels, you could be creating, you know, cutation or different things that would attract insects. You know, it, it, it's all, everything's interconnected yeah. for sure. These are all variables well, that are very difficult to isolate. Yeah, it's very difficult, very right? difficult to, to isolate. And let me ask you a question. We were talking about temperatures just a little bit ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would, Brett was talking about the dude, man, I use his birth name. I, he, he was talking about uh, cool, likes, he doesn't like perpetual harvest because he can't, you know, cool the temperatures down at the end of the, at the end of harvest. So he thinks that really frost things up. Sure. Do I need to send him some more winter frost? So is somebody that what mentioned, I'll, I'll throw that, you a softball again. Happen? But what, what's up is, and somebody said Give in me the comments, <laughs> somebody said in the comments, hey, that's what winter frost does. Can you explain that? Yeah, and yeah. Is there a benefit yeah. to really so, doing that? For, for the record, if, and I like to always think about this, and, and if we even go back, you know, 
a lot of my answers that when when we did like the bro science thing was based on what I could see how a plant worked in nature and worked evolutionarily speaking, right. right? So we know it's an annual plant. We know that annual plant's going to start in a cooler environment, work through the middle of the summer, through the hot environment, and finish off there just like we are literally right now. Heck, when I came in, we talked about, oh, we got some cooler temperatures coming. Yeah. We can get through those. People can get another week or two out, maybe actually able to get pretty deep in October here in Fort Collins, which would be fantastic for the outdoor season. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, it makes sense, you know, and even even doing the, you know, the roots and things like that. So dude's not wrong. However, I would say much in the same way of saying I could do all my mixing and mix up all a bunch of organic inputs and, and cook soil and everything else. Or I could get a bottle of New Millennium and have those same available okay. elements. You okay. know what I mean? So to me, it's kind of like the same thing. Yes, you could do that. And yes, it's going to work. And yes, that would be happening outdoors. But I can also say, this is exactly when it's going to happen. This is how it's going to happen. I'm going to do it with Winter Frost. Winter Frost is initiating senescence. I remember way, way back, uh, Two-Tone used to, he, like, he's like, spell that. Put me on. And I like, but it's something that he, you know, really like triggered with him. He's like, oh, I understand now what's happening. Same thing that we're seeing happening in the fall. We're seeing those uh, yellows come out. We're seeing the oranges come out. We're seeing the reds come out. Sure. All those pigments were there. It's just as the chlorophyll dies off, those pigments show through. And so that's really that part of that senescence process. So can you trigger it with cold temperatures and things like that? Yes. However, many people do perpetual situations. Or if you have, you know, commercial situations where you may, sure. you know, sure. it's like you may not have, just like dude mentions, the ability to do that. Well, if you don't, you can use a product like Winter Frost. What does it do? Again, initiates senescence. Secondarily, it makes a plant think it's going to frost. So by doing that, the plant literally pushes out more oil to protect itself. Wow. Because that's really what it is. It's an oil sweater, right? And and oil and, and trichomes and, 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 and trichome being the stock and the head being the full trichome, but that is a response to stresses, typically abiotic stresses. And I like to look at them as positive stresses. Are there positive and negative stresses? Yes. Why is it a positive stress? Because it's accentuating what we're looking for and what's of a horticultural significance, wrapping it all back up, which is oil. Again, it would literally be like talking about how big your strawberry plant is without talking about the strawberries. I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> how big are the strawberries? How many were there? Right. And most importantly, does it taste like a strawberry? What did it taste like? You know, it tastes so like, like strawberries. So, 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 so that's what we're doing here, folks. We're, we're growing oil. So by giving it those positive stresses, which to some people might look like a negative, sure. but because that's what we're producing, it's a positive, right? What do you think then if we're oil farmers about the giant Christmas tree? Bugs? No, thank you. Because no, thank you. Yeah, because I'd rather have less outside, plant matter right? and more oil on it. I'd rather stack the I'd rather stack the trichomes two or three deep. Sure. And, and and that's why we're doing this though. That's why we're getting rid of, rid of the apical stem, right? Yeah, yeah. And then even you know, right. and I know we we didn't even you know necessarily do that. Uh, it'll come right back up. Oh, yeah, it'll if you just leave that like that. It'll, and it'll then, go right back up. Yeah, a lot of times this is uh uh super cropping, right? That's super cropping. Super yep. cropping, yep. high stress training, whatever you want to yep. call it. Yep, classic Actually, super cropping. Super cropping is really this man when you just go. And you stress the stalk by breaking it. Just by stressing it, you'll hear like a slight snap. And uh, that brings the stress into it. Yeah, and you can even like, that. I, that's like p pinching techniques. And yeah. people, if you can go through actually and pinch every day, interestingly enough, play. it'll keep that apical meristem. Yep. But it affects that that oxen flow mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. And uh, like I had a buddy who ran a huge facility up in Canada and they pinched. They, they didn't do any. Yeah. They never. And, and, and his thought was always, you know, preservation of nodes. You know, especially top nodes. And I was like, oh, damn, that's pretty, you know. And hey, that 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 middle one, like you want to keep that if you can. Right. But, you know, and <laughs> that's right. Um, and then, you know, once you're cleaning up and keeping things like this, I'm a huge fan of the day 20 prune, you know, and that's in flower. That's and it. that's getting a, a, a lot of family it. removal. That's so before they go in, let's say a week before they go into bed, they'll usually go in and I'll skirt them up a little bit. Back to pruning, up. by the way. Back to pruning. So we're, back to pruning. We're, 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 we're like from, literally. Let's hit it from clone to harvest. We clone to harvest. Clone here. So we got clone there. We did a nice little, something um, like you know, yeah. something like that, yep. something like that. Uh -huh. You know, we did a nice little demonstration there. We continue that process as it grows up. We top where necessary. I like we bend where necessary. So anything that's going to be low yeah. and not get a lot of sunlight and or light yeah. and then not get a lot of air movement yep. too. Yep. Because that's where the bugs are going to hang out. And so I will continue to do that, especially as, as again, as part of the IPM management program continue to, because even manual removal 
takes any bugs that's on the damn leaf and you remove it from the room. Sure. Believe it or not, that goes a long way and also is part of an IPM program. Right. Pruning is part of an IPM program. By the way, Again, scouting is the biggest part of an IPM program. Yeah, of course. IPM paying program. attention, putting a, putting a sticky card in there. You know what I mean? Well, looking at your plants. That's why I'm a big fan of hand watering as a new grower. Get your face in the plants. See things that are going on. It's really important. Seems like a bumper sticker. <laughs> you know, get your face in the get plants. Get your face in the plants. Write that one down, Grambo. Um, so, but it's true. Get your face in the plants. So I continue this process of culturing and, and shaping and topping and getting that anywhere four, six, eight tops. I get that into flower. At that point, they're pretty well skirted up. I don't How have a lot of bullshit on the bottom. How long is it taking your bench? Um, I, to be honest with you, I could veg faster, but it's a matter of space. So it's a matter of waiting for things to be right. available space-wise to move it up. So, so three, four, or five weeks, because I mean, I you mean, grow a big plant in five weeks, no? Yeah, you can grow too big a plant in five weeks. Yeah. So I literally will, I, I use LEDs at 25% and leave them intentionally in solo cups for longer than they should be to yeah, actually slow it down. Yeah, me too. So I'm, I'm manipulating that. I, I could get them in, I could get them in flower a month earlier if I wanted to. So sure. it could easily be, you know, let's say... You know, two weeks to three weeks of good rooting in a cup before it's ready to be transplanted. From there, I could, if I was cranking on them, I mean. Growers, it's harvest season outdoors. So get to harvest without any of the late powdery mildew problems that come in flower. Attack it with ATAK, A-T-A-K from Optic Foliar, guys. It's a great product that does not damage buds, hairs, trichomes, or affect taste up to seven days till harvest. So get your harvest off without compromising quality. Control your PM, eradicate your PM. Tell your local hydro store, opticfoliar.ca, and hook it up. And, yeah, and you're supporting the show. Dinesh, shout out, OG supporter, number one supporter of the Dude Grow Show. Don't forget to check out all the foliar spray products at opticfoliar.ca. It's highly overlooked by growers, I find. Two weeks I could have them, you know, ready to to flower if I was really running it. But I hold things way back. So usually it's like, you know, a two month rolling schedule. I'm sure you can kind of see how that yeah. cracks out. Two you months. know what I mean? Yeah. Two months. Um, but I get in everything that the bottoms, all that bullshit on the bottoms. I don't I used to wait till the 20 to take all that. I'm I'm taking that shit off just like we yeah, did now no early or I wait. Just <laughs> waste energy and food. Even at yep. this point. Even at this point. So pruning throughout, you don't pruning throughout. Yep. I'm a, I'm a fan of it. And I'll continue do not as heavy a removal of fan leaves throughout veg, but I will do I will do light removal of, of fan leaves continually fan throughout leaves. veg. So give me theory, man. Fan leaves are solar panels. What and they're not you? directly feed, they're feeding the whole plant. They're not directly feeding the the flowering side. Okay. So, okay. See what I'm cool, saying? Man. So, so, you- so in anything that's on a plant that's green. It's photosynthesizing. Sure. So the bud itself mm-hmm. is photosynthesizing and that's going right to the bud site. So that's the thought process. And especially now, again, with a vegging plant, we're fine. We actually want some more of the solar panels on there. We want it to be feeding the whole plant a little bit more. Once we've actually got through transition and flower, so we've got through the first two weeks right at that towards the end of day, you know, or the third week, somewhere right there, day 20 ish, um, maybe a little bit earlier, depending on the variety. Once you've seen that good bud set, you know what's happening. It's time to go back again, take any crap that's off the bottom, get completely rid of it. You've only got about two feet of penetration. I don't care if it's here or if it's here or if it's here or if it's here. You know, that just isn't dependent on how big the plant goes sure. in. So get to your, like, let's two say feet. roughly two feet, yeah. okay? And then take every fan leaf that you can get your hands on. Anything that's got a nice red, long look on that leaf, all the big ones, all that go right down there and, and, and to that to that that crutch of the, of the stem, get it out. Wow. If it's not going right into the bud, you're telling me. Yes, I take every single one on, and I, I, I I'll show you know we can, I can you, I'll get if we want, we can even post some pictures of it. It's like a plant you can show before and after. man, it's coming after dude for uh, trimming. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, I now, now, lies. granted, you have to, you have to tell who you're going to do this first. If you read the Secret Life of Plants. Don't piss them off. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hmm. Play a little boat uh, song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rub the cup a little bit. Treat her right. Uh-huh. You know. Um, Mine ain't gonna like me, much, man. We play rough. Yeah, we play rough around <laughs> here. But 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 you know, since we talked to her about it, and let her know why we're doing it. It's fine. Um, but wow. no, you gotta get you got. <laughs> hey, think it sounds crazy. It's not crazy. I'm, I, I'm not even joking. Read the Secret Life of Plants. You'll man. be blown away in the first in the first chapter. You'll go. The, what the? I I'm not gonna what. say the word. But what the? Tanazi's coming on in a couple of days. Uh, Sacred Three Mushrooms. Yes, yes. And so I just you know he's a. 
pretty spiritual. What days are you coming by? I might need to come by. Uh, <laughs> uh, for, uh, I think it's a couple shows from now. I'm nice, sure. nice. Now, oh, but, he's always a good one to have on. Oh, yeah. But I was uh, you know, studying up a little bit, and I have this, uh, I think it's called The Entangled Life, and it is by Merlin Sheldrake. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And his dad is Rupert Sheldrake, so... Very regal names. And it's interesting. No, but uh, High C loves this one. And Rupert Sheldrake, yep. because he does, uh, like, magic stuff. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and not magic, but whatever the heck it's called. <laughs> and then this guy is his son. And he starts talking about, yeah, how fungi make our worlds, change our minds, Love it. shape our futures, man. It is such a trippy book. Talks about how fungi were here first and they colonized the plants, man. Well, and that's, you know, I talked to a lot of people and even just about soil because that's that's hugely integrated with with soil and the rhizosphere and and those interactions. And I tell people, go talk to the most brilliant soil scientists in the world. You know what he's going to tell you we know about soil? Nothing. Oh, it's like a hundred years worth of nothing. Study. Yeah. You know, I saw, I heard something the other day, and this is this. You want to hear something mind blowing? Yes. The amount of space that we have explored on any kind of level would be equal to one glass of water worth out of the oceans on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's like sense. literally saying that. Oh, there's no fish in this glass of water. There's no fish in the ocean. Right. Right. Tell me. Ah! It's, it's it's amazing. We're that just getting started. We're just getting started. Isn't it crazy we're just that we would be the only ones? Well, there, look, I think that's a whole other show. But um, <laughs> but but no, it is crazy. It's very arrogant. Yeah. I want to tell I you. Think it is very, I, I think it's very. I think it's very arrogant. anthropocentric. Yes, I agree. That book is about not being alone. It's about being connected with everything else, whether it's through fungal hyphae or through whatever uh, invisible hyphae I had where I was able to last week ask you, send you this message. I guess it was through the air, through cell phone, whatever. But just because we can't see it, it was like this invisible hyphae that said, hey, I need help. And they say say one of like the most like um, (laughs) tangible forms of that, right? Because... You know, they even say like supposedly like kids are a lot more in tune with other senses, if you will. Right. We talk about the five as adults. Right. But reality is, is there other dimensions, other senses, things like that? Probably. Right. But as as an adult, we've, we've dumbed it down. However, they say one of the most tangible um, uh, in your face kind of evidence of that connection would be, OK, I haven't thought about somebody for Three years Bro. used to be a good friend or whatever. You think of them, they say, call them, and it gives me goosebumps because it's happened to all of us. Telephone you call them immediately, be, yeah. and they're like, Bro, I was just, just thinking, thinking of you. you. Yeah. So they're saying, like, that's like one of the more tangible ways to go, no, no, we are connected. And that was a signal that went from my brain to your brain. But if you ignore that and you just keep driving and don't make that call, now we haven't even like now we're really not tuning into it. Bro, high that, C- that gave me goosebumps. High C wants to <laughs> hang out on with talk with Tanazi because he's this sure sure. What's his name again? Rupert Sheldrake. It's the dad. Uh-huh. He did experiments, man, where they had the do- had, had dogs that always wait for their owners by the door. Yeah. And he just started messing with them, doing different times, and it's totally inconsistent. And they knew. They knew when the owner was coming home, not because they pulled into the driveway. They Dude, knew when it was somebody else. Smelled there, them. There's some. Uh-huh, I don't think so. I think it was. Them. I think, I think it was they. Hyphy, bro. I think they did some things to to adjust for that um, because that's going to be the first you know it's thing that somebody said. Hyphy, but there's. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a network, lot, right? lot going on. I need to get Tanasi to bring me one of his kits. You know, what I mean? oh. well, Jared, <laughs> Jared mentioned it's like, like, like you could have other senses. That's not the hypothetical. Birds nope. and a lot of other animals can see ma- magnetic fields. Yeah, That's absolutely. How they can like molt or migrate and everything. And they speculate humans had that and we lost it. And with and they say with genetic uh, manipulation, we might be able to get it back, boys. <laughs> What's well, like? How do you how do you go to the place of origin with humans, right? Because that's what you do when things are screwed up in a plant. If you got problems in a potato, you go back to Peru because that's the country of origin. You got problems with apples, you go back to Kazakhstan because that's a place of origin. What, do, what do humans do? Where, where in space do we go for that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How do we fix this? That, if we could know more and have like be more in tune on that, wouldn't that be pretty amazing? And and again, maybe we are or have the ability to be. We're just not tapping into it. <laughs> and I, and I think that's probably one of the things that that book is kind of you know eliciting. 
towards or were kind of, you know, trying to open your mind towards, yeah. you know. But I also love, I, I love Michael Pollan's, you know, who, who's controlling who, the whole body desire, like, you know, are we controlling plants? That's why I always make the joke too. About, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just like, <laughs> the guy's name what's, is Michael what, this, Pollan. This thing's controlling yeah. right now, all right? Yeah, my, Michael Pollan. Yeah, B-O-L-L-A-N. <laughs> uh, but, but the body desire is, 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 a, is a lovely breakdown of, you know, uh, uh, four basic human desires, sweetness, uh, intoxication, beauty and sustenance, sustenance being potatoes, beauty being tulips, uh, uh, intoxication being cannabis and sweetness being apples and breaks down the entire ethnobotany of each one of those and their connections with the human race and how, who's controlling you, who and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, yeah. In one of his other books, he talks about corn doing that because yeah. corn has been cultivated. And I think he does in the Omnivore Dilemma. Yeah, I believe yeah, that's, that's that in the Omnivore yeah, Dilemma, that which is a great one too. He does have one out on psychedelics as well. Um, and it did not, it didn't start it's, it had to be like his first journey with psychedelics, but um, not, 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 yeah, not to spoil anything, but yeah, she did some psychedelics writing the book, which I mean, how could you not? Verlin Sheldrake did a psychedelic experiment for mushrooms and he goes, so he, it was like at a university or something and he goes in this hospital and they give him mushrooms and they go, and they bring a guided person in and they go, all right, I want you to think of a problem you have at work. And he's just like, <laughs> 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 no, that's that fantastic. Awesome, man. No, that I, uh, awesome. I, uh, when I was in Amsterdam this last time, uh, Soma, I was sitting down with Soma and I met with him. Great guy. A lot of fun to sit down and rap with him about the history of cannabis. And of course, oh, I shit. always loved his lavender oh, and, oh, and everything. But he does DMT ceremonies up in like the attic on the canals right there in downtown, um, uh, Amsterdam and does like these hour or two long, uh, hour or two hour long DMT ceremonies. Ooh, and I'm like, Jesus. Love if it. I had stayed for one more day. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That don't interest me. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, do definitely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like, I'm now, what doesn't interest me is doing, like, so So DMT is a smokable form of ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is obviously, that's, you know, you're going full on. That stuff that I'm like, I'm not sure if I really want the physical toll that yeah. that, you know, that that would take or the time. You gotta understand DMT, dude, you're up and down like 15 minutes. Yeah, DMT but, and ayahuasca would be like the as a direct and versus yeah. name sort of thing, right? <laughs> I like Way to bring it back. Come on. Oh, boy. This is why we keep him around. Way to bring it back. Oh, Lambo, give me a dice, man. DMT. I smoked it. Oh. 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 Thank you very much, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, but, you know, to each his own, to each his own. But that's, uh, I don't know, I've, I've really loved the stuff that's been going on in in Colorado with fungus, you know, since we're on the subject, and obviously Colorado being decriminalized at this point, it's the best IBM dog we've ever had. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I tell people really kind of the interesting thing, and, and maybe Banner can back me up because him and I go to a lot of the similar shows, or even in fact the same shows, or even the shows together. Um, mm -hmm. But. It used to be like, okay, you're at Red Rocks and everybody's busting out, shows going down. And it was always, I got this strain, I got that strain, check out this weed, check out that weed. Everybody's still smoking weed, by the way. That's not changed. Right. But nobody's talking about it. They're all, I got this strain of mushrooms, I got that strain of mushrooms, I got this. It you want this gummy, man. you want that. You, like, it's crazy. I believe right? you guys go to Am the I same wrong? shows. No, we, 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 uh, <laughs> mushrooms in a new weed, man. We we laughed about it one day. We were waiting in Red Rocks on the stairs, mm -hmm. and we there was multiple conversations about cultivating. Just just and you can just hear these like randomly it, up and down the it stairs. Was, it was just hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's like you know that's kind of the like at least you know the the some of the nerdiness I think, and I mean that in a really good way um, that, that we used to see in cannabis. We're seeing more in the mushroom world now, in the fungus sure. world. You know what I mean? And and you know, God bless people like. You know, Tanazi and stuff that's been putting out that the ability to do it yeah. and and the knowledge on it and and the passion behind it and uh, that's the thing. I mean, you can go you can go down to the the head shop and get a, a spore uh, or a strain of spores now. Like it's it's yeah, that's in a, my drawer. The the grow shops, <laughs> all the grow shops in Denver, at least I know they're all diversifying because it's tough times right now. Yeah, by putting in mushroom kits. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, absolutely and one last thing I'll say on the subject of uh, you guys talked about uh, DMT, <laughs> DMT's dimethyltryptamine. Yes, sir. A uh, fact about psilocybin: if you look up the chemical structure, it's four pho dimethyltryptamine. Yes. So uh, mushrooms are DMT. They're just an offshoot. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be yeah. afraid of it. It's the same thing. I didn't, you know, and I didn't realize that. Somebody brought that to my attention not too long ago. I didn't actually realize so that. And you're don't be correct. afraid of DMT is your message to me, dude. Yeah, yeah basically. Right. And everybody right. else, too. Call yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, what if I just show up and I'm completely different? 
next day. Good, you know. Maybe, 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 maybe I don't know. Maybe you'd be like swami. completely like relaxed. Yeah, right. He's like, right. all of a sudden you're wearing nothing but like big wraps. <laughs> Things very comfortable. They're very comfortable and flowing. I don't think yeah. I want to go outside myself and look at myself. <laughs> Thanks. I'm in here, man. I'm, I'm cool right here. I'm cool right here. <laughs> no, I, the one that, the last thing I'll say about this, I do love uh, the fact that like the whole microdosing thought process and like, hey, maybe we can just take a little less. You know what I mean? And I've tried. Still, like, I've tried. It still, doesn't work. And, and I'm still, just taking more. It well, doesn't work. It, it doesn't work. I like I. I love a good half gram gram these days. You know what I mean? Where it was like before back in the day, you used to be like, well, you got to eat like a whole eighth or so you do anything. Yeah. And then you go fucking meet God and you're like, Jesus. <laughs> like, you know? I met him on a mountain like last year. <laughs> you got to remove the ego and the pride about it. Yeah. It's like, it's a contest. Like there's no need. There is a, there is a, Time and a place for hero doses. Don't get me wrong. But I love like, it just like for me, a half a gram, a gram, that just like gets everything a little bit fuzzy, a little bit soft. It makes it with tangible. or without, with or without, bud. Uh, always with. Oh, man. But it, it allows you to enjoy bluegrass, stuff like that. On the- <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you this both, guy, you both at the same good. show. Yeah. I can talk to yeah. Banner and be like, yeah, yeah. band's cool. Right? <laughs> and talk to Jaren, I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> hey, hey. You know, <laughs> love me some bluegrass. Not ashamed. You know. Um, oh man, me and Banner met at a bluegrass show, right? Bluegrass, no, 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 it's all- it's like hating on rock music. Like, well, uh, it's a little more nuanced. Hey, than- you guys were talking about trimming, man. Grambo, yes or no on bluegrass. You're the tiebreaker. Yeah, oh, no, I, I'm a guitar player, and they shred. So. Uh-huh. I've seen, uh-huh. I've seen Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones many times. Dude, the Fleck. Oh, Dude. that is a <laughs> that is a fun show because it's very just eclectic, and it's like really? the, especially if you had Howard Levy. Victor the original Rudin guy, is uh, one with, of my with the, with the harmonica mm. and the piano, and he'll be doing both at the same time. The piano sounds like a <laughs> saxophone almost. Like, dude, and it gets jazzy and crazy. Maybe not your side. It's too Fort Collinsy. <laughs> Come on, we have a friend who named their kid Bela. Come on, <laughs> I'm very Four Collins. Yeah, hey, hey, shout out to Four L- Collins. Rupert Love Sheldrick this. named ah. this kid Merlin. So what are we talking about here? Well, but he also <laughs> had Rupert going for him. So I'm like, you know, yeah. that's some pretty regal shit. All bets are off. But yeah. A guy who believes in magic named his kid Merlin. It's pretty cool, well, man. I, res- yeah, I think it's cool. Merlin's the horse and the Bugs Bunny and uh, <laughs> the medieval one, the knights. I bet he was named after that horse. Yeah, it must be. It's gotta be it. It's gotta be it. He unzips. <laughs> hey, speaking of horse suit. Speaking of horses. Names. Did anybody see what Elon Musk's kids' names is? Yes. Which one? The, 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 most... the one that's got the X's and J's. Yeah, it was and the numbers and thing, man. I like wrote that. it down because it was so damn weird, man. I. Yeah. I, I, Mission yeah. accomplished. You're telling everybody about it. Oh, I guess so. Gotcha. It's named A gotcha. X A E A twelve. And then the other one's named Exa Dark Sidral Must. <laughs> oh. and, That's hilarious. Extra dark? I, I wonder I wondered how he had the balls to change the name of Twitter to X. It's like because he doesn't he, this guy does he, he, he no. just wants to watch the Well the Prince, funniest part is already did that. You're, right. You're it's been done. Copy, Dude, yeah. And it's, at what point do they stop Prince. saying? formerly known as Twitter, right? It's like, <laughs> you're not really changing the name at that point. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. It is so is, weird yes. to me. <laughs> On X. Yeah, so you're Twitter. kind of... Yeah, the irony there. <laughs> this is Putting Exa. Twitter in there anyways. Dude, her Every middle time. and last name are Dark Side. Whoa. That's... She well, looks pretty. They probably drink each other's blood and stuff. Again, way outplayed. I mean, but Pink Floyd. But, that, 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 you know, who was uh, Angela Jolie and, and Billy Bob were drinking each other's yeah, blood lame. long ago. It's played out. <laughs> lame. That's all been done. Oh, got, man. Get off my Yeah, lawn. get back to the 90s, guys. Come on. That was when the real shit happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, abandoned any chance of a normal structure of a show. Let's time, let's man. figure this out. Yeah. No, it's all good. Uh, I'm enjoying the hell out of it. The dude does such a good job at keeping the rails on things but uh he just looked at this cast and was like no way <laughs> no way talk amongst yourselves i don't even blame it it's fun to go off the rails sometimes now, i love i'm having such a great time with y'all uh, i do have a couple things from the comments that i thought i think that'd be uh, lovely to go through you could contribute with um and i put i put this one on just because i agree it says loving the show to the info gents and is that's uh he's from across the pond, right? With oh, that's a, no, that's a J Pen eighty seven from. Oh, Canada. this is Shout your buddy, to isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, Nora. Right. Yeah, okay, deal, deal, dude, deal. Great show, awesome points of view from each of you, and that's what I wanted to stop because uh, 
uh, yesterday or last show, whenever it was, I was like, I was set on, we were talking about drying and curing. And the dude was just like, hey man, I just do it kind of dude. Like I can even use that trim glove or there's a trim bag that you shake <laughs> it. And I'm all getting offended for the DGC. You know, right. Cause I here. just have this mantra in my head, banner, you instill it in me all the time. He goes, got people listening to be better growers. And I go, okay, man, so I want to put my best foot forward and give the best information. So I would never advocate to use, you know, start shaking your buds. I think you're shaking trichomes and damaging them. But that's my point of view. And I cannot, I got to check myself every now yep. and again. And uh, I got to say that that it's okay for other people to have, it's okay. So other people have points of view and this, it is okay for other people we, to have points. It's okay. It's just it's fine. Okay. Yeah. We should do like a panel show or something ah, where people have different points of view. We're we can talk about it. Hey, what? Yo, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chuck DGC. And that's got to be a reference to Chuck D. Oh, yeah, that's a uh, great anime. Uh, that's that's great. Great. Awesome, awesome, yeah. So, yeah. Yo, I got a letter from the government the other day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you yeah, did, though. I did, man. What is that, <laughs> what is that Scott? Uh, it said they were suckers, man. <laughs> it said to come get my package is what it said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, come you know what package. it said, really? Right. It said if you would like to arrange delivery of this package, <laughs> this number is what You're it like, said. <laughs> and then you quickly Googled yeah. the number and it was like the uh, police services. No, it's the police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's on their stationery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Postal service investigation crime. Jesus. You're like, I know nothing about I know nothing. Like, man, I can't help but what people Are send you me. daring me? I don't know what people send me. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chuck D says, Scotty, I have carpal tunnel and arthritis. Trimming is painful and difficult for me. I live in Prohibition land. I keep my gross secret. I don't have trim party, I don't have trim party participants available. Trim aids are sometimes needed. Your rant against trimming aids, more specifically the attitude towards those who use them, was a bit demeaning. Sometimes you forget to fully consider other circumstances. There are more reason than laziness these products are available. And my drop, I had a- I, read, I think, he's, I think that's I read really well said. I read the comments in the morning today. I'm always scared to do that, but I didn't. I was like, this guy's got a good point of view. So that's I, crazy. Yeah, that's I haven't checked myself with that one. And you know, a lot of times even people will be like, well, how do you, you know, how, how do you grow a weed or what's the right way to grow things? It's like, hold on, it really depends on your goal. And I think this is kind of an interesting example of that as well. I've got these constraints, but I still want to grow. What can I do? What can I get to help me through that process? And there's absolutely, you know, nothing wrong with that. Now, do I like to use those tools? Well, I don't have those constraints. So obviously at this point sure. in time in my life, I don't. There may be a time in my life hey, it, where you gotta it's get, happening. You got to get your oil, bro. Yeah. So, so, so how do you how do you trim them? Use this as a segue. Come on, man. You got yeah. some comments, there. Grandpa, did you do you take some pictures of these? Yeah. Well, uh, we were filming in post, so it'll, yes. it'll be right there. Happening right. Ooh. They're right in front of us Ooh. now. Ooh. So what I do is, uh, and this Sleep. is always funny because, like, uh, I saw a meme one time, and it still makes me laugh. Uh, and it said, and it was actually, I'll, I'll say what, so it was by uh, Coma, who can have some pretty funny memes. He can also be kind of wild. But anyway, um, it said, uh, do you have any history of, it's him in a doctor's office, right? And it's a meme, obviously. Do you have any history of mental illness? It said, no. Oh, wait a second. My cousin does still wet trim. And I just thought that shit was hilarious. Like that, it still makes you laugh to this day. To laugh because so, so, okay. Yeah. But guess what? I can say that because I have wet trim. Okay. And I know. See, <laughs> 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 I'm throwing it out there. I wet trim. And I know I a lot of people. A brother, maybe. <laughs> made up brother that you want to have admit that instead. It's me recording. Nah, just kidding. Really? Yeah, I really do. It releases all the chlorophyll, bro. And, and I, look, I, 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 I what I, is that better? What about bro science? <laughs> really? Isn't that, isn't that the origin of that? I, I guess. Why, why drugs? Uh, wet trimming's bad is because you're you're uh, rupturing cell walls and releasing chlorophyll. But for me, for me personally, like, I don't know. Whatever, that's what works for me, and I don't think anybody has any nah. complaints. There's nobody ever, uh, uh, you know, accuses me of wet trimming. But I do a full trim. I mean, I take the plant down. I do uh, uh, full fan leaves, sweet leaves, everything. From there, it gets hung, and from there, it goes into a bucket with gamma lids. We talked about on here before. Yeah. I leave it in there, kind of you know, in branches basically until I until I go and pull out to smoke it. 
So that's that's just I, I had one guy who did more of the the dry trim, but he literally trimmed to order basically. So he called them roll cages. Which I was kind of yeah. which I thought was kind of like, and he would stack it up in bins. So like, every like day. that, I was like, yeah, yeah that's cool. Every day, Banner sits here. We work, and he just takes his trimmer. Yeah. So I don't see anything wrong. Cages. Now, if you Fingers. if you Fingers. go if you go and do try and do a full trim after you've done a full dry, it is messy. It's a lot messier. Like, so yeah, it's sticky when you wet trim, but they're they're pliable. You know what I mean? They're yeah, I agree. They, I know, they're, both ways. So yeah. I you know, again, I yeah, I and I can say the wet trim joke because I wet trim. Uh, <laughs> use a machine. You got any recommendations? No, no I have no recommendations for that whatsoever. Uh, um I mean I I yeah, I just it, it is what you're, what it, you're it, into. It's, also. Well, it's, it's whatever also, you're happy with. It's what that, that's I exactly mean, it. I mean, and not you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a uh, you know a shameless plug for for grow dots, right? So with grow dots, for a lot of people, that that is what they're looking for. They want something simple. They want something straightforward, and and they want a certain quality. Is that you know, it? Are you going to get some of the same full expressions on all plants? Probably not. But for a lot of people, is that a great way for them to do it. Yeah. And if that's, you know, if that's good enough for them. Nobody about it in that level. It's so I, I, I couldn't it's agree so with you true. more. Nobody, there's actually very few people, let's be kind of honest for a second, that care about it on this level. Like the, what, what's sitting right in front sure. of you. There's not, it's, it's, it's a, it, our percentage of you of folks out there. But, 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 but it's us. Here. It's us. It's our community. Yeah, okay, I was going to say all of us. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but, but how big is our community really in the scope of the world? <laughs> Million. You know, so the like, DGC. so we could say within even the cannabis community, there's only a certain amount of people that really want super top shelf. Dude, dude, and then if you look at, at the population, mm-hmm. well, now we've really gone a much so. smaller population. So that was my only point is that. Or some of the chosen ones, but but you know, I like there's to people your, that love to coffee. Your, to your point, I have a lot of buddies that aren't hobby growers, sure. But man, they're they've been throwing seeds out in their backyard yes. for years, years, and that's the only time they grow. It's a couple plants, and they're happy just to literally get free bud. Oh, yes, yeah. that's all they care about. That exactly. I so, know plenty of people like that. And what's wrong with that? There's I'm here to say nothing, all. right? I just don't smoke. No, I'm just, just kidding. Well. No, he's I'm not. I'm just kidding. kidding. He's I'm not kidding. kidding. He doesn't I'm smoke kidding. it. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, I'm seriously. There's a lot of people like that, and they love it. They're super happy with it. And they're how can you fault them? Dude, for I that? have a I have a neighbor that I give, and I'll leave them unnamed. And they're you know that they, they, they get clones and, and run them outdoor every. And sure. They they're super happy with it. Absolutely ecstatic. Get that and 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 something like you know for them grow grow is like the most perfect thing you know that Ooh. they could honestly use. Grow nuts is an awesome base. I mean, yeah. bases don't have to be set. Sexy. They, they, they don't. They don't. You know, I, I've always your, focused, even though I have bases, I've always focused more on additives anyway. That's really. what it is, man. Yeah. So get, this has five grams. I'll take my my real growers plug now. This is five grams of grow dots in it. Um, I put it in probably a month ago. Dang, I okay, here's some here's a, so one with roots. And you just get to leave it alone, man. You know, just get to leave it alone. It's the old rotisserie, set and forget it, baby. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I should be Ron Popeil and my old days, sir. No, my point showtime. is the base is um, I don't think barbecue. they're super sexy bases. Um, I think stuff like adding a silica. I think that's a great one to add yes. in. I think things yeah, I like think, fulvic acids, I a think winner at the end. Humic fulvic acids. This is sexy, bro. It, it, and it is, and there's some really great technology in there. It's just good additives. No, yeah. just just stuff that's going to kill your. That's it's yes. very sexy. <laughs> but again, that I goes can. to the plant janitor part part of things. We're cleaning. Exactly. We're, we're, that's, these are plant janitor. It's products. like awesome wow. cleaner. Yeah. You ever go to the dollar store and buy the awesome cleaner? <laughs> no. That stuff rules. <laughs> wow. God knows what's Bro, in it. Grandma, you throw that in your it works. It smells really good too. You do IPM. Like Fabuloso? Yes. Yeah. It's that whole uh, whole cluster. Like I'm I'm familiar with Fabuloso. Constellation of, of products. The constellation. Yeah. Of awesome products. cleaner. I love it. I love it. But no, for me, it's whatever makes you happy. So what's the best way to grow? Doesn't really matter. What's the light in the world? Best light in the world doesn't really matter. Sure. Depends on your goal. Depends on your situation. Depends on what you're looking to do. Depends on what you're happy with, ultimately. Should put a smile on your face. That's it. For that, real. That's the standard. Absolutely. If, you get, if you're smiling when, uh, during it, then it's all good. If you're smoking dank butt at the end of 90 days, man. Well, that's you'll be smiling for sure. Then. But it's kind of like skiing. You don't have to be the fastest person on the mountain to have fun doing it. Oh, What's know. more important is you're enjoying it, yep. that you're smiling, that you're that you're operating within your, <laughs> your level of control. That's what's fun. It's not going, oh, I got to be the fastest guy on the mountain or, well, I'm, or I'm not shit. But that, let's be honest. That's how it matters. 
there's enough information and good quality equipment. I'll shout out to my little AC Infinity 2x4. Mm-hmm. Uh, my buddy, Naven Johnson, has a couple 4x4s going, nothing super fancy. And then they're <clears throat> crushing it. The bud that they're pulling out of there, they care a bit about strains. Uh, they And it's just the amount of kind of equipment that's out there, man. You can hit the ground running for a thousand bucks. You 100% can. And, you know, I also truly do believe, and, you know, I've, I've had theories on this for years. And and honestly, the going back to see your life plants again, um, that has actually helped solidify some of the just the random kind of, you know, hippie plant love thoughts that I had for a while. But the reality is like, if you're positive and have a good attitude and, and, and put the energy into her, she, she will put back out. Right. Like she can be fickle and prude. And if you try and abuse her, you're not going to get what you could get. I like, I really, really believe that because I've seen it in a lot of situations. So train, treat, treat your plants, right. Treat them with respect, but love your hobby, love what you're doing, sure. you know? And I think that will show in the product. I really do. Agreed, man. It's a good way to end it, boys. Ta da! Good hanging out. Thank you for for hanging out, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Give yourself a final plug. Yeah, no, uh, you know, obviously you guys know who I am, uh, Jaron. It really is a pleasure to uh, to come out and, and hang with you guys and hang with the community. Um, I do, I do really enjoy this. If anybody has any questions, you can always find me on Instagram, uh, Jaron J E R I N underscore H underscore. Pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm pretty responsive on there, and you know if I if you see me out on the road, come and say hello. Uh, the crew is always great about that. If I see him at trade shows, if you see him like that. In fact, I've seen you folks all over the world, and you guys never hesitate to come up and say hello. So please continue to do so. I love it, man. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Grambo, man. Tight work, brother. Oh, yeah, thank you guys. All right, let's do it. Take her easy. Oh y'all, dudes. Where's the later? Yeah. <laughs>